move on to the last speaker, who is Holly Olson. And Holly's going to talk about a 3D printable model of pulmonary arteriovenous malformation as a useful tool for improving patient education. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Caldwell. Um, like you said, my name is Holly, and today I will be talking to you about um, pulmonary arteriovenous malformations and patient education. I want to give a huge thank you to my capstone committee, Dr. Rashan, Dr. Lindquist, and Dr. Salcedo for all their help and support throughout this project, as well as the entire MHA program. Pulmonary arterial venous malformations or pulmonary AVMs are vascular anomalies where there's a direct communication between the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein. So they're actually bypassing the lung capillary bed. The most common cause of pulmonary AVMs is an autosomal dominant disorder called hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia or HHT. Patients who develop pulmonary AVMs are at great risk of developing a stroke and so it's important once a pulmonary AVM is diagnosed to promptly treat it. And the gold standard for treating pulmonary AVMs is through vascular embolization, where essentially you're cutting off these feeding arteries that are carrying blood to the AVM. So that blood will then instead flow through the normal connection of blood vessels. When patients are diagnosed with pulmonary AVMs or HHT and are having to undergo these procedures, it can induce a lot of anxiety and on top of that, most of these patients have a congenital disorder, HHT, which can be passed on to their children, further inducing their anxiety. And studies have looked at how anxiety can affect patient outcomes. And so institutions are looking at ways to decrease this pre-procedural anxiety in patients. And one of those is by improving patient education. So here at UC Health, the standard mode of educating patients on pulmonary AVMs is using um, the patient's own CT scan as a visual tool to talk through the diagnosis and the procedure and the anatomy of the, the, of the disease. However, most people aren't trained in reading CT scans and even with the physician's narrative and their help explaining the CT scan, it can still be a challenge to completely understand what they're looking at and visualize what's going on within their own body. So we hypothesize that a 3D printed model will help pulmonary AVM patients better understand their diagnosis and procedure, thus decreasing their anxiety. In order to accomplish this, we started with a single patient CT scan with untreated pulmonary AVMs and imported that into 3D Slicer. And 3D Slicer is a computer program where you can take these stacks of 2D images, such as a CT scan, and use various tools to segment out your desired anatomical structure to build a three-dimensional model. So for our purposes, we wanted to segment out the heart, the great vessels, and the pulmonary AVM. So if you take a look at this image in the top right, this is an axial plane of the CT scan. So we scrubbed through all the images within this stack and segmented out our desired structures. And then we repeated that in the sagittal plane, and again in the coronal plane. And then 3D Slicer puts together all that information to build a three-dimensional model as we're seeing on the right-hand side. So here we can see the heart. We have the great vessels, which are all labeled. And then here's that pulmonary AVM with its feeding artery and draining vein. Once we produced this model in 3D Slicer, we wanted to make some changes for printing purposes that included smoothing out the model and enlarging some of the blood vessels. So we turned to Maya, which is another computer software to um, accomplish this. So as you can see in the image on the right, this is our final model that we produced in Maya. As you can see, the structures are much smoother when compared to the model from 3D Slicer and the blood vessels are much thicker so that when the model is actually printed, these structures are a little bit stronger and easier to point to when the physician is showing this model to the patient. As we were working in Maya, we made multiple changes to the model, and so we printed a couple prototypes to assess these changes and make decisions for further changes we wanted to make with the model. So we used the Lulzbot TAS-6 printer to accomplish this, and PLA, which is a type of plastic as the material. And while this was great for prototyping, uh, the material wasn't as strong as what we were looking for for use in the clinic. 
And so we've printed our final model using the Form 2 printer, which uses a resin material. And this provided a much stronger model, more durable, and you can actually paint this model. And so we um, decided to use this for our final model. And this was the final product that we produced. So after it's been painted, you can see this is a heart, which is in dark red. Our superior vena cava is in blue, as well as the inferior vena cava here. The aorta is in bright red, and our pulmonary artery is in purple. Here we see the pulmonary AVM from an anterior view, and again in a posterior view. And the reason we wanted to paint these structures different colors is so that the physician can easily ID these structures by calling out a color, and the patient can easily follow along with the physician's narrative of the model. So we were able to produce this 3D printed model to help educate patients on pulmonary AVMs, which is a complex disease. And we'll also be uploading this model into Sketchfab, which is an online website that you can log into for free and view any model that's been uploaded. So for instance, if a patient wanted to come back and view the model after their clinical visit, they can log on to their, with their computer and view the model again. Or if a clinician doesn't have 3D printing capabilities, they can log on to Sketchfab and use this model for the education of their patients. We've also developed a detailed protocol so that if institutions do have 3D printing capabilities, they can follow this protocol easily to produce this model for themselves. The next step for our uh, project is to actually test the model in the clinic. So we've developed surveys to measure the level of the patient's understanding of the diagnosis, of the procedure, as well as the anatomy. And then we'll also be asking about their level of anxiety in, in relation to their diagnosis and procedure. And finally, we'll ask uh, what their preference is for visual, for visual tools, if they prefer the, um, the CT scan, the model, or if they liked both of them during the narrative, or if they would just rather have no visual aid. So that will be the next step for our project. Are there any questions? Awesome, Holly, great job. Um, we do have a question. Uh, the 3D prints, Dr. Lee says that they're beautiful and what informed your hypothesis or like is there literature on this? And uh, that's our first question. Sure, so uh, I was brainstorming with Dr. Sean and thinking about, because um, we wanted to work on something with patient education and uh, we were thinking about pulmonary AVMs because a lot of these patients do have a lot of anxiety and so we are trying to think of ways to decrease this anxiety and help them feel more prepared for their um, procedure because we did have some patients that didn't come um, to clinical visits because they were so anxious and worried about what was going on. And so we thought this would be a great way to start to um, make that anxiety decrease. And there have been studies that have looked at how um, patients who were having coronary procedures when they had heightened anxiety, they, um, there was a casual relationship between that and um, more negative outcomes. And so we're hoping this could be a next step for patients with pulmonary AVMs to hopefully decrease that anxiety. Awesome, thank you. Um, do you think that the amount of labor and costs that go into 3D printing is worth the potential outcome? Yeah, I think so. For me, a lot of the um, modeling just takes, it does take some time, but once you are able to sort of figure out what you're doing, it can get, it can go really quick. For instance, the first time I segmented out the heart, it took me a couple of days, but I went back and resegmented it and it took me probably 20 minutes. So I think it's worth it. And hopefully that's what we'll find by testing the model is seeing if all this work is worth it. So that's something that we'll hope to see. Awesome. Thank you. Um, that is our last speaker. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. And thanks to all of the speakers that uh, spoke in this session.